uh, guys, uh, so this thing, I mean, you can see that topic there is too fancy for me. Uh, so it's like vanilla and you are flavoring it, you are actually mixing with something and you are getting out something from it. Uh, I didn't mean to be that fancy there, but uh, I had to do something to make it ideal. So sorry for that. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you just. Somehow, 
even I'm not able to figure out how, but I have seen people discussing it often, that we are not able to cater positiveness in our projects. Uh, so I, I try to cater it whenever it's needed. I try to exploit that, that so that we can go ahead and include it in our projects and we can actually uh, do some good thing with that. But somehow I have that breakthrough has not happened yet. So I'm, I'm still working on that. Maybe in the next conference whenever uh, we have, I, I'll be able to explain more on that. But just to give you uh, a reference, this guy, the second guy, so he's Mr. Smith, there's a story behind that. So he's Mr. Smith, he's walking uh, to his office, he's got um, an appraisal meeting, scheduled at nine. So he's in a hurry, he's walking and he's thinking about like, what should I say to my boss? Um, uh, and he's got this, uh, this promotion thing happening as well. So he's expecting a promotion. So he's walking fast, he's thinking, and suddenly uh, he steps onto this banana peel. And he slips. He slips, uh, he hurts his back, he, um, the, the, he hurts his uh, bone, and he, he's not able to join the office. So that's a, that's a threat for him. That's a threat for him. So he might, he might not be able to get the appraisal uh, as, as desired, as, as he was looking for, or he may lose on to the promotion. So that's a risk for him. Looking at the opportunity here, boss, the opportunity here, now uh, this guy, same story, Mr. Smith, he's walking to the office at 9 o'clock, he, he, he has a meeting, so he's thinking about something, but he's not too passionate or he's not looking forward for that meeting because he knows in any ways uh, the appraisal won't be that good. I have not done enough in my, in my tenure of last one year. Uh, and he's sad about something. So last night he had a breakup with his girlfriend, so he's thinking about that. He's, and, and accidentally he puts his feet on this banana peel, he slips, and what? There's a beautiful girl standing behind him. And he, he falls onto her. I mean, again, so I was just kidding. So that, that's, that's an opportunity and the story begins for him. So, so a risk that you see is, is a negative can be positive as well. I was just trying to uh, you know, include the positive thing here. Uh, and, and as quoted by Mr. Dr. Ellen Morin, that's, that's the quite second and uh, concise input, uh, definition that I could actually uh, figure out. So it's an uncertainty that matters, uncertainty that if realized, impacts one of more objectives in a negative or in a positive way. Moving forward. OK, so uh, may I ask how many of us are from PMI background? OK, so there are many. OK. Uh, does these things uh, sound familiar to you? Like, like if, you, if, you, if you talk about traditional risk management, then how are we handling risk in a traditional project that's, that's a non agile project, uh, to be precise? Are these sounding familiar to you? That what we do, it's like more of a front-loaded thing. So we go through the risk uh, identification thing. Uh, uh, then what we do, we do control anal uh, qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis, we do SWOT analysis, we maintain risk register, uh, and in the end we monitor risk as well. So it's like a, mo a lot of time and effort is actually spent towards these hypothetical risks. So that's like both in upfront planning and ongoing and uh, monitoring and discussion. So the point here is that it's not bad to plan. Yes, you should plan it. But let's not plan with the bad information. So let's not plan everything at the start of a project when you have less information about something. Uh, and uh, let's not maintain too many documents and registers. Uh, but again, it's a good thing. I mean, it, it's working for some projects. So I'm not saying these, are th these things are bad, but that's how traditional risk management happens. Let's see how Agile caters risk. So in Agile, as we know, that if we implement Agile values and uh, principles well, then it caters most of the risk. So for example, uh, I'm talking about Scrum here. I'll be specific to Scrum here because that's the most popular framework. Uh, and probably that's something that I have worked upon more. But uh, I'm sure uh, the framework that I'm talking about or I'll be explaining in the next few slides will be applicable uh, to any methodology for that matter. Uh, so in Agile, it's like more emergent in nature. So, so we are meeting every day for daily stand-up. So if there's any issue, it's realized quickly and abruptly. Uh, so the delay time is less in Agile. It's, it's more of a real thing in Agile. But the question here is, the big question here is, is it enough? I mean, do we think, do we really think, I mean, I know that we, uh, most of us are on Agile. So do we really think by just an application of the Agile principles and values behind them, are we, are we monitoring, or I'm sorry, are we handling risk well? Don't we still get risk identified late in the cycle? Don't we still, I'm not saying that we can mitigate risk completely. Yes, there will be risk. But what I'm trying to do here is let's identify them as early as you can. 
and let's not plan for too far ahead. So, so are, are these practices that I'm talking about, the agile practices, are they good enough to handle risk, or do we still face issues in our projects? We, we still, right? We still have, like, let's say, technical debts. We still have, um, you can say, uh, the dependency issues on, on third parties, uh, and we still, we, we still skip, or not skip, but we still miss out on our deadlines for that. Okay. Let's see what did I do to overcome it, or as a team, what we did, uh, we did in our projects to overcome it. So yes, we did embrace uh, the traditional risk management process, but we tried to make sure that we embraced, like any other thing, we embraced as much as it was required. So we did not go too far ahead into it, but we did embrace uh, the minimum traditional risk management techniques, and then we customized it with the agile principles. And uh, to make it a little more effective, one, the fourth point that you see here is something, fourth and fifth point, is something that we really focused upon that was, uh, I think, uh, Mark spoke in the morning, or Tathagat, I'm not sure. Uh, but like applying your engineering and technical practices for treatment. So, so I mean, you, you apply your craftsmanship, your, your skills. I mean, you do pair programming. You do continuous delivery, continuous integration. All these practices, you apply that. And we, not, we, we, only, we, we apply them, and we apply them as a treatment for those risks, whenever required. So obviously, for, not for everything, you can apply those engineering practices. But whenever it is required, yes, we are doing that. And uh, we used product backlog to manage risk. That's okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Can you give some examples how you customize uh -huh. the risk? I'll come back. Exactly. So in, in the next few slides, I'll be explaining all these things. So there's a framework where we'll, you'll get to know. Okay. So if you still have any questions, please do. In backlog, I'll come to that as well. Okay. So that's, that's how I did it. And, and we'll see step by step how did I do that. Okay. Let's go ahead. So this is the flow. It's a, it's a most simple flow in the world. We know that. We do it. We do it for everything. We identify something. We analyze something. We analyze it. We treat it. And we monitor it. That's the most simple flow. And I kept it uh, like it is in, in traditional method. So I kept it like that. Did not play much with it. So when, when we come to the risk identification part, now I'll, I'll tell how, do, how uh, did I use Agile for it. So there are three things to risk identification. It's, it's when, it's how, and who. So how do we identify risk, and when do we identify risk, and who does that? So talking about the how part here, this is again something which I kept like it was in, in the pinball. Or not in the pinball, but that's a generic thing, the risk breakdown structure we look for. So I kept it simple. Uh, there are so many things. If you have any risk related to your acceptance criteria, user stories are not well defined, your definition of done, definition of ready is not well mentioned, that's the uh, product risk. Uh, risk related to the organization, maybe the policies, bad policies, hierarchical level, anything that's proving to be an impediment to your, uh, to your sprint goal or to your release goal. Uh, then you have security related risk. So anything related to the vulnerabilities, um, injection, uh, SQL injection thing, all these things, and security aspects. Whatever security aspects you have, that comes in the security. You have project related risk, so like missing the schedule, uh, the, the timeline, the budget, because we know most of our projects, uh, no matter how hard we try, they are under that scope of fixed price thing. So, so you, you still have risk of missing uh, those, uh, those points, so that comes under the project risk. And talking about the business risk, that's again related to the competitors. So you have competitors in the market, you want to change the strategy, uh, uh, maybe related to the economy, all these things are related to the business rate. Okay? So, and that, that was the how part, that how did we do that? And what about the when part? When do we do that? So we can have a risk, uh, risk workshop to identify risk, but in Agile, as we are focusing more on Scrum, so rather than having an explicit risk workshop, we have used these meetings to identify risk, like any other thing. So I'll start with the risk planning thing here on the top and see how did we do in the risk planning meeting. So in the risk planning meeting, uh, we have when uh, the team is sitting and they are deciding on, this, on the release goals. Uh, so, so in the release planning, you are deciding on what user stories, what features you will be doing in this release, and uh, when are you planning to, to release uh, something. There, the first draft of something called risk register uh, incepts. 
So there, you, the, the team, the product owner, they sit down. Uh, obviously, they want to be able to identify risk at the story level uh, there, because that may be going too far ahead. But maybe if they have any, they can foresee any dependency on any other thing, or, or any other challenge, any other architecture challenge, any other thing they see there, they, they create that risk register there. And not only creating risk register helps, but as a task, they include it in the product backlog. So when I'm saying they are including in the product backlog, at this level, they might be including it as a user story, as a separate user story, uh, investigation task, to see if, uh, if those risks can really uh, be mitigated or reduced or whatever strategy they want to apply. But, they, but it's included in the backlog. Why is it included in the backlog? Just to make sure it does not get missed. Because in Agile, it's not, I mean, or, or to be honest, in, in, in Scrum, not much attention or focus is given on handling risk. So we may miss, miss upon handling risk. Uh, we may figure out something, but if we are not including it in the product backlog, we may miss upon that. Moving forward, we have the backlog refinement meeting. So now you know your release goal, that okay, fine, these are the stories that we'll be working on this release. And in the backlog refinement meeting, when team sits to, uh, down and they figure out what stories they'll be covering in the next few sprints, uh, when they are, uh, when they are uh, the product owner and the team, they are busy in estimating them, then it's kind of a mandatory. We, we, we made it mandatory. It may work for you, it may not work for you. But we made it mandatory for each, uh, for the team member to go through the each user story from the risk perspective. That while they're estimating it, just give a couple of minutes and see if there are any risk, particular risk associated with the story. And if they are able to find one, either go ahead and add as a subtask in a user story, or add a separate user story, it depends on you. So that's what we did in the product backlog refinement meeting. So the risk register that was incepted in the release planning, it has some more information, some, con some, some next level of information in it. Now when it comes to the sprint planning meeting, now here, as we know, there are two parts to it. So it's like how part and what part. So, so uh, we go ahead, the product owner goes ahead and he's, he said, okay, fine, I'm looking to, I'm sorry, I'm looking to see these many stories in, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yes, these many stories del getting delivered or getting accepted by the end of the sprint. That's the, that's the what part. And talking about the how part, now when the team is breaking down those stories into tasks, or when the team is asking, uh, asking a product owner that how this should be done, then they again, uh, they, if they have not already added tasks uh, uh, to, uh, to that story related to risk, they, they go ahead and, and add that task. So it's like a mandatory thing on all these, in all these meetings to add a task related to security in the backlog, if it's not already added. And to revisit that risk register in every meeting to make sure that we are covering uh, our basis from, from the risk perspective as well. Same thing happens in the daily stand-up. So, so they go through their uh, Kanban board and they, they see if there's any, uh, they, they discuss their risk and if there's any, they again go ahead and, and update that. And in the sprint review, so product owner goes, uh, product owner sees the task, the stories, and he accepts that. And whatever risk is there, we accept that, that's okay. If it's not, there, there'll be residual risk that will be again added to the product backlog. I'll come back to that. So th this is how we use our, our sprint meetings. Uh, to identify risk, and again, uh, if, if you add, if you make it compulsory, our uh, team will revisit those stories for from risk perspective, and chances of uh, identifying them early in the cycle is more. That's again my suggestion. Something that worked for me. And who does that? As I said, the team does that, but the ownership is uh, is of uh, obviously the product owner uh, to to see if the risks are are being captured and mitigated. Next part. So next part is the analyze part. Uh, so again, in the analyze part, as I said, that l when, when I'm talking about risk register, most of us would be aware there are certain columns in the risk register. So we have probability column, we have impact column, and we have something called exposure. Uh, so again, the probability is likelihood of happening it. Impact, impact is, uh, what's the impact or if that risk happens on cost, schedule, performance, reputation, whatever. And then the exposure. So exposure is, is like the quantified potential for loss that might happen if certain risk happens. So, so talking about exposure, what we do, we, we multiply the probability and impact and we get exposure. Uh, and each probability and impact, they are measured on a scale of one to five with a, with a definition like what, what one means and five means. So 
So let's say uh, impact, uh, talking about impact from low, medium, high, severe, critical. So these can be the, the, uh, the slack for. I think so. <laughs> I, did, I did not plan that. <laughs> but yeah. You did not that. Exactly. <laughs> Probably. So, uh, so again, so that's how we analyze risk. Again, no brainer. That's how we do it. We are in our uh, in our traditional method as well. Okay. Uh, talking about the three print part. So this is the risk register that I was referring to. So we, we can see these risks. So if you go to the first risk. It has like new features may require significant rework and skills. And then you see the probability of it, impact, multiplication of two is the exposure part. And in the response, we make sure that whenever it is needed, we add a task to that. As I said, that we keep adding risk task as well in a, in a backlog or app within the story. And, and as I said, we use our uh, good engineering practices for that. So we try to make sure, let's say the technical spike. So it's created for the investigation. Uh, then you see the security task created uh, for potential security flaws. Exactly. I'm sorry, I don't know. The risk case materialized. Then the task will come into Exactly. So what happens, so you, you, are, you are monitoring a risk, let's say risk register from risk planning meeting. So you're coming to the sprint planning meeting, so yes, you're sitting down, you're breaking down the task, and you have not added any task for that particular risk as such. For example, the security flaw thing. So you have, you, on the last minute when you're doing the sprint planning, you realize, okay, so there may be the security flaws with it. Let me see what can I do about it. And you have realized, okay, now this, this can happen. You, you go ahead and you add a task for that. No, you add task for what? You, you add you task for- me or you're sure that there is a security concern? No, you may add task for both. So if, if it's an investigation task, you're investing something. So you cannot ignore risk like that. So this is something that may happen or may not happen. So even if it's an investigation task, you still go ahead and, and add that. And let product owner decide in the sprint review meeting whether that has to be uh, accepted, it's done or not. So basically you will be moving, uh, I mean these risks will be added as a user story in your uh, product exactly. backlog. And then you will be creating that task for that user story. So it may happen uh, both or ways. Or you can create that task as a Ex new user story in the sprint itself. Exactly. So, or, or what you can do, let's say there's a login user story, very simple one, basic yes. one. And you have a, you discovered a security flaw with it. Hmm. So there's a login user story, you go ahead and add a, add a subtask sub to okay. that user story. Hmm. That, okay, fine, let's investigate, or it's a payment gateway thing. Hmm. So let's investigate for the security. And you add a task to it. So what happens, because Agile does not explicitly mention risk handling. So at times what I have observed, and I failed as well, in, uh, because uh, I did not monitor risk in one of my projects, uh, we miss upon risk because we do not monitor it somewhere. Yes. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. So I have probably two questions. Uh, yeah. So first one is, uh, you know, if I add another subtask, uh -huh. I don't know how it worked out if you can share this. Uh -huh. So uh, to me, then it will be difficult to estimate Good point. So I am adding a spike Good point. as a subtask in a story. Mm -hmm. If you can share some of your thoughts. Exactly. So it depends. How many of us do uh, estimation in backlog refinement? And how many est uh, of us do estimation in sprint planning meeting? Backlog refinement. Backlog. Anyone in the sprint planning meeting? Both. Both? Both. Both places. You, and you do both places? Okay. So when I say that we are we are monitoring risk from day one. So like we are monitoring it from, from release planning. Let's say when you reach to the backlog refinement meeting and you still have not captured that risk, you have still not thought about it, but you, you, you go ahead and you add up, uh, you add, add a point to that, the estimation point to that. Now you are in the sprint planning meeting and you have realized that there's a risk to it. How many of us have done or redone estimation twice or more uh, in our projects before a sprint starts? We do re-estimate things. That's exactly what we do here. So even if you have assigned a story point to it, before estimating uh, the story, or even after estimating the story, you, you realize that there's a task, there's a task added, and you realize it in the sprint planning meeting. You go ahead and, and as a team, you do it, you re-estimate that. Basically adding a scope to that. Exactly, you, you re-estimate that. I don't think that- And that it should... won't be a spike story. I think we got confused. No, so, so the whole point I think I raised is but normally, uh, you know, uh, what today, uh, probably the way we, I know we are probably doing it, 
is that we keep some some time for the spike. Exactly. So that's the reason we always used spike to call it spike. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So so it was out of my capacity, which yeah. I used to plan for that spike, okay. and mm -hmm. I used to keep it outside. Mm -hmm. Now, if I create a subtask, for mm -hmm. example, we use Jira as a tool, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. I'm just to give an example. So my definition of doneness never meets until I like close it. Right, but that bounds me to close that oh, story. Okay, okay. Let me clarify myself. I'm sorry. I have written task there. That that's a user story actually. US two zero three one, like US double one zero three. Okay. That technical spike. That's a user story. That's my bad. Okay. So so yeah, if it's a user story, yes. so then it doesn't fall under the definition. Exactly. Of the exactly. Yeah. So you can have both task and user story. So, so if you see the description, that's new features may require significant rework and skill. That cannot be a task. That cannot be. A we are task to any user story. That's a user story in itself, exactly. or or even if it's not user story, it's a separate task in the product backlog. Fair enough, Fair enough. right? I'm sorry, my bad. So that that has to be US two zero three one instead of TA two zero three one. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. How 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 do we handle it in Sprint? Uh, I'm sorry, in Scrum. I'll tell you. No, how will how was it handled in Waterfall? Exactly. Right, you did. But what I'm saying, I'm not saying that was bad. That's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, we are practicing Agile. Are we focusing on risk here, on the risk piece in Agile? Or are we solely relying on the Agile principles and values to take care of those risks? That's my question. If, if, you are, if, you are, if you are implementing your principles and values in such a way that your risks are handled automatically, your team is matured enough to look for these things and include it uh, in, in, their, uh, in their user stories and or in their estimation themselves, then it's great. Probably we don't need it. But it my, I'm sorry. It never happens. Exactly. So my experience with it is that irrespective of how mature your team is, you still have risk in your projects that go unidentified in agile. So it's better to have. A, see, let's not be too rigid. It's all about. It's but, but being agile doesn't mean that you have or being uh, following Scrum doesn't mean you have. You cannot follow anything else, or you cannot include or customize it with the best practices that you have around. So that's exactly what I did. Okay, yeah, second question. Yeah, so second question was, uh, uh, so one thing I really like what we just said is to include it in the backlog. Mm -hmm. And so so that really creates a transparent for the team, probably that makes them to look, uh, uh, that's what I, I, that's my key takeaway mm -hmm. from uh, this. But the second point which I had was, uh, so you classified a lot of type of risk, right, as you said, mm -hmm. breakdown of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I mean, I'm able to visualize right now in terms of project risk, I can definitely take it as a user step. How about, uh, organization risk. Organization, business. Exactly. Those are generic and somebody exactly. Senior management exactly. Management. So this thing called enterprise level risk management. Okay. So th this is something that will fall into that category. Okay. So uh, one question over please. Like just in addition to this, if suppose my risk is while planning my release that I have a dependency on an environment, and maybe that environment I don't get due to some reasons, what will I do? Exactly. So though I made a note of it, but that will have a lot of impact. It will, it will yes. I have planned something, exactly. environment issue is not coming up, I'm not uh -huh. able to start with my regression. Right. Everything that I've planned has gone for a toss. Okay. So adding any task or even while discussing it, I mean, how we are rerouting based on the risk. Okay. So identifying is one part of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we know we have a third party dependency. We're mm -hmm. not getting a, you know, upper management buy -in. we need to we add yeah, this exactly. buy -in. I have mentioned something as a third party integration yeah, so yeah. These kind of things require some rerouting. Right. So, so we are we doing that? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, you, right. So, my question here is, okay, so how would have you done it had you not implemented this thing? In your in your general agile uh, the scrum methodology that you follow, uh, that you worked upon, or framework, whatever you call it, there's a lot of discussion going around with framework or methodology. So, how do you, how do, you do that there in, in your general agile uh, in scrum framework that you follow? So, generally, whenever we use taking up a story, so there are a few basics where we see that, uh, uh, do we know all the things mm -hmm. in our definition of ready? Mm -hmm. In definition of ready only it will come out, it should come out if the definition of ready is right, mm -hmm. but I have a third party, uh, right. third party dependency or some other team, I need to, it's a cross-functional thing, mm -hmm. if this team will be able to deliver this piece of work, right. then only I can proceed. Exactly. So like, let's put this back, mm -hmm. wait for their inputs, otherwise mm -hmm. there's no point taking it to our Migration will not be able to work on that. Right. So, do you say that this is kind of risk management only? This is part of risk management? But how are we rerouting? No, risk I mean, they, do we need to? No, what I'm trying to understand here is that, okay, fine, you are doing all that thing. That's excellent. Please keep doing that. But in, what I'm focusing upon here is 
rather than just having a discussion around it there in, in those meetings with your product owners or with your architecture owner, just let's document it somewhere. And let's use a product backlog like we use for any other item. So basically, this will be a mitigation action also, what you are exactly. doing in that, response. That what response exactly you will be doing to mitigate exactly. that particular Exactly. That's a treatment part. Hmm. So, so you're treating it. So what I'm saying is you're doing excellent. You go ahead and do that. There's no prescription that you have to do this. But what you can also do that worked for me, and may work for you, that's please go ahead and include it in your project. And let's make it more visible so that it's then the product backlog so that tomorrow I'll, I'll come to the monitoring part and probably then this will become a little more clear that uh, how why exactly do we need to do this but my point is tomorrow when after, when you are reporting to your senior manager or, or let's say program manager portfolio manager so there you can have something uh, like your normal task you will also have something to say that okay fine we are also taking your risk we are doing it explicitly and we are taking care of it well I'll, I'll show it to you how. And, and one more thing before I move on to that. Uh, we have this spring here. So this risk register, it's not related, it's not, uh, it's not confined to, to one uh, sprint only. So that's like a risk register for the whole release. So you have those sprint numbers there. So you can, you can uh, figure out whether you want to take that risk in sprint 11 or maybe in sprint 12 or in sprint 13, or the one task is still pending there. So as and when you get a solution for it or treatment for it, you can add uh, a task in the backlog, and then you can add the sprint number. That when are you looking to to handle it? In which sprint are you looking to handle it? Yes, please go. Ahead. Uh, I was just looking at a lot of next steps or mitigation contingency actions that you created here, and you're opening them as stories. Would it make more sense to use Jira to track your risks and then act, track them as next steps, or use the stories? Based on the contingency or no, again, uh, yeah, so not everything can be user story. For example, Mana with Chris to pair program is not necessarily a user story, even as a technical spike, right? It is more of a next step uh, to make sure that you get that done for a particular story uh -huh. in order to mitigate whatever risk that might be there. Exactly. So you can either you can either keep it as a user story or as a task, whatever works for you. There's no there's no hardcore prescription here. There's no one size fit all as we all know that. So yeah. I think one benefit which I see right now in this is uh, adding it to a backlog. It makes it completely transparent and it makes it everybody to look into it and close it uh, as part of risk. Right? So that's, the that's, that's the whole motive behind it. Let's not ignore risk management by the following agile. Let's not solely depend on the agile principles and values. Let's have something in place. As human, we can forget things. If if we can only, ma I mean, were we able to uh, manage risk only uh, on, on the requirement document? No, I mean, we, we did introduce product backlog to manage requirement. There was a reason for that. We were not able to keep the requirement specification document at a place. We were not able to uh, handle them well. That's why uh, that product backlog was there for a reason. And, and that's the reason we want to have these risk tasks there as well. So that we, we know that what are the upcoming risks, where, where, uh, where can, how can we mitigate them, which sprint can we take them in. What's the progress for those risks? I'll tell you the progress part. Can uh, I, I think the product yeah. backlog was there because requirement cannot be figured out in the beginning. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at all the things which you have listed mm -hmm. down, listed mm -hmm. on over here, it is basically that requirements are not clear in the beginning, and that is what the practical thing is. If you start any development, mm -hmm. you will not know things, and that is exactly. the concept of product backlog is there. So exactly. Basically, if you are if you're documenting these things uh -huh. in a product backlog, it uh -huh. takes away the seriousness only of the product backlog. Uh, why why will you po put your uncleared requirement in the product backlog? You need to have the requirement, the product owner has to clarify the requirement, uh -huh. put into a user story, uh -huh. then it should come as a product backlog. If, if there's something that you discover while executing the user story, exactly. then it goes back into the product owner and product owner will figure out a user story. Okay, uh, my, my question here is, uh, this video streaming schedule slipping, that's it. Yes. So that's something that has come out after executing some user story. That, that, that's, there's a slipping, the schedule slipping, and, and there's something that Mana and Chris do, they, they need to pair program and find out a solution for that. My point here is that fine, yes, you can have you can have a separate requirement story for that. No, no, here see, if the streaming schedule is slipping, mm -hmm. it's not it's not something which is which is which will go into user story at all. It has nothing to do with the product. No, I mean that's a that's a task actually. I have added to the task. So you can add it to a story. 
you can you can have a story. Don't we have the investigation stories? We do have investigation stories as well. So you can add a task to those investigation stories that, okay, fine, uh, we have to investigate something. And looking from the risk point of view, let's add a task and let's use uh, uh, the best agile practices to handle them. We are just making it more explicit here. That's it. Uh, I think there's a gap in the whole, uh, maybe in the project which we're executing, there's a, there's a gap of uh, management buying into this concept of uh, user story and uh, product owner. It, it may be a chance. Uh, because otherwise, because here, if you really look into Agile, mm -hmm. if there is a video streaming, the schedule is slipping, no way it will go into product backlog. Team will outright deny accepting such a thing into product backlog. Because it is not, it is not even a user story. It's, it's a requirement clarification which product owner has to take with either the client, customer, manager. So, so are you saying, okay, fine, we'll bring it up over fine, fine, let's, let's, have a, let's have a last conversation because I have something to cover. Uh, so are you saying that we, if let's say there's any gap in the requirement, okay, how, so how does the product, are all the stories assigned to the development team only? Is there no story assigned to product owner? The user is, user is story will be written by the product owner in meeting. I'm, 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 I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, saying like exactly. By the product owner, but assigned to the scrum team from the yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay, so do you not do you not agree that there can be a story that has that is assigned to a product owner that product owner takes? Exactly. No, it is there because uh, sometimes no, product, product owner, if he is not clear about the exactly. requirement, they create That's the stories but assign it to themselves and they will work on them. Thank you. And once it is. Uh, done from product owner side, then they can go ahead and assign it to the store. Exactly. So that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm not saying necessarily that Maram and Chris to pair program can be the only solution, can be the only response. If it's if it's a risk, what I'm trying to highlight here is, if it's a risk, let's categorize it, categorize it in a way that it is visible in the product backlog explicitly. And whether it's Maram, Chris, your development team guy, or your scrum master, or um, your, your product owner, whosoever he, he is, he can actually go through the backlog and see that these are the risks and what am I doing about it. See, uh, it's fine. I mean, I don't want to <laughs> further discuss it or criticize it anymore. But you discuss with the agile coach and none of these risks, mm -hmm. any way the agile coach will agree to put into a product. Number. These okay. are not user stories. Basically. Right. Okay, fine. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Okay, let's see the next part of it. So till now what we have done, so we have identified risk, we have analyzed risk, that what could be their impact, probability, and all these things, and the exposure part, and we know now how to treat them. Now, this piece, monitoring, this is something that I have found, uh, you know, the most interesting part of this flow. This is the risk modified Kanban board. Now again, so this is not the exact board that we use in our, in our project, but just to make it visibly uh, good, just to, just for the illustration purpose, I have kept it like this. So this is not uh, taken from any of my board. So for example, uh, I have not used story, risk story here in particular, but you can see that you have these stories, for example, and you are tracking your task here. So you, you're tracking it like it's going from to do to in progress to done. And like you track your task, so, so the, the task in yellow, these are your normal tasks. And what you can also do, you can add if the task that you've added or the stories that you have it for, for, for your risk and you are catering in a sprint, you can add a separate red color stick for that, sticky for that, or, or a card for that. And like you, you are monitoring and tracking your ordinary task, you can also go ahead, monitor and, and track your risk ones. So as we talking, we were talking about the transparency thing, that we want to be transparent uh, in in the process of uh, handling risk, maybe we can go ahead and do this as well. Yes, please. Uh, is this whole uh, feedback mechanism coming into play? Because traditionally, or irrespective, when you are assessing risk, mm -hmm. you would want to understand whether whatever mitigation action you've taken and you are in progress of taking, mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not just about completing that action, right? Exactly. It is also about assessing whether that action is actually reducing the impact and the probability of the risk. Mm -hmm. If it is not doing that, you have to read out or replan your action or think about something else. But with this, are we just focusing on completing the action in the first place and not reassessing whether the so, so impact of the risk has mm -hmm. diminished or not? Right. So, so when we are going to this thing, 
So we are starting to uh, we are starting to uh, document risk from the release planning meeting. And it may happen that by the time you reach to sprint planning meeting, the risk you initially identified may no longer be valid or may have diminished in nature. So you can go ahead, and even in this daily stand-up, so, so let's come to this Kanban board. So when you are discussing this board in your daily stand-up, you may realize that, OK, fine, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the impact of it has, has, has reduced, so probably uh, the risk that we thought that was uh, that was high in impact, it's probably not that high after the investigation task. It's, it proves out to be to be a medium risk. So that, that's all right. That's the job of the product owner to accept whether he still want to continue with that that uh, that risk or not. But here, what you are doing, you are just tracking that. So even if it's reduced, that's all right. That's reduced. You you enter a note to it. That, okay, fine. The technical technical investigation is done. Uh, the impact of this seems to be low. And, and then moving it to done. Yeah, my, my only point is it cannot be called a story in principle mm -hmm. uh, because the story essentially will carry its whole nine yards, right? You start it, complete, or you can't change it midway. That's that's at least by definition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, if you keep it in a different task, you obviously add stories for spikes, mm -hmm. which in itself is a mitigation action to understand what is the actual impact. Mm -hmm. And if the estimates change or you need something else, which will obviously carry the whole nine years. Right. But other aspects would essentially not be stories or tasks. They can be mixed in, but they'll be aside from your sprint goal as such. Yeah, exactly. So we are not, yeah, that's a very good point. I would like to mention that we are not keeping this as a sprint goal. I mean, you're talking about a sprint goal. So you're, you're looking forward to, to deliver stories. Uh, uh, the, you know, as a part of definition of done, you have certain, but let's say, for example, you have a security flaw in your system and you have added a security risk. So obviously, you would like to add it as a definition of done. The problem with that particular example is a security risk would be that I have not even thought about doing a security test. Mm -hmm. right? And there can be security flaws based on the changes that I'm making. That is a risk, and you, as a mitigation action, you essentially plan for a security or penetration test. Mm -hmm. However, if there's a security flaw, that is essentially a defect, which obviously goes back into your backlog to be prioritized mm -hmm. for one or the other sprint. Mm -hmm. That's Essentially, a bug, a defect, or exactly. a technical so, defect. Yeah. So, but, but, but the investigation part I'm talking about. So, you are you are doing a story, you are you are doing a, a, a functionality, and you want to assess the security part of it. So, you obviously there there are developers, there are team who themselves add a task for it. I'm not I'm not only talking from the security point of view here because for security, more or less everyone will go ahead and add a task for it. If there's a uh, there's a functionality related to third party payment, probably people will go ahead and, and add a task to assess the security part. That's all right. But what I'm saying is, apart from this security, the, the other risk that you have identified, uh, for which you need a certain task, you may add a certain task to, to see if they are getting mitigated or not. My, my only point was, do you need a dedicated uh, risk assessment meeting, or do you no. do it as part of your standard? No, I mean, you, you do it as part of your normal scrum meetings. So you don't need a dedicated risk uh, workshop or, or uh, risk assessment meeting. Yeah, yeah, I'm not talking about it as a day-long meeting or something. Yeah. Just a 30 minute, 10 minute, 15 minutes. So I, 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 I have dedicated you on all the risks that have been added. No, I mean, you get new risks as part of your startup as you go further. But essentially assessing whether the course of action that you've taken mm -hmm. has changed something. So all the risks it has already identified. Mm -hmm. Will require a dedicated uh, a thought process, right? Exactly. Not necessarily while you are discussing your uh, run of the mill story. Exactly. Your exactly. So that's something. I mean, you you sit. It's a co-located team. You're sitting across the base. So there, there's no uh, necessary, or you can say no uh, official meeting scheduled for that. But yes, obviously you can group together and discuss how you're doing on that risk, and you can go back and update your task that how you how how well have you done there or where have you reached. Yeah, that's that's my question. Yep. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. As a response, you added user story in the backlog. Okay. Right? Okay. Now, that user story might get scheduled. So, are we saying that irrespective the risk happens or not happens, we still want that user story? So, that happens in the sprint planning meeting. So, in the sprint planning meeting, when you're taking these stories from the backlog, and as I said, you reassess that risk. risk so, register. your stories are separately identified that these stories were result of risk assessment. Uh, yes, exactly. Or, or it can be technical, or it can be investigation story as well. But are they identified that they came out of the risk? That 
Yes, yes, exactly. How did you follow up on that trace? Suppose story gets completed. Mm -hmm. And after a month, how did you get to know you had added some story to your backlog? Exactly. But you take it in the sprint. I mean, so as I said, that if you look at the risk register, so you take. Stories are immediately picked up. Or, or you, you can plan it, whether you want to pick it up in this sprint or in the future sprint. Or, Okay, so these stories that I'm talking about, so as I said, we do not plan uh, for the releases. I mean, we just plan for maximum of three, four sprints ahead, or maximum for a release. Let's say seven, eight, six, seven, eight sprints, not more than that. So, so obviously, if you're, not if you're not taking it in a sprint, you are mentioning it in that uh, this register, that which sprint you're gonna, you're gonna take this story, particular story. And you, this risk register is for the release, it's not for a sprint. So you keep revisiting it to see how the other stories are doing. So let's say for example, you scheduled to pick a story in sprint 13, and you are in sprint 12, so you know that, okay fine, we scheduled it for the sprint 13, how are we doing here? Do we need to pick it in sprint 13, or, or is it okay if, uh, if, we, if we move it to sprint 14, or, or is it done, or, or is it, do we still have that risk? So all these things are decided, or, or because that was in technical investigation story, for example. Exactly. So it will be listed, updated. I'll show you the framework. Yeah, I'm sorry. So it's basically being same as uh, EM Bok or something. We will have to revisit this uh, register on regular basis and you, update it. Exactly. So you revisit it during the meetings that you have, the, the, the normal meetings that I you have, the I mean, meetings. You revisit that register and you update it. Sorry, you had a question. So, so the purpose of this uh, risk modified Kanban board, again it's not a Kanban board, we don't have WIP limits here, uh, but it's like a modified board. So the whole purpose of this is like you're monitoring your normal tasks, your ordinary tasks, you please go ahead and monitor your risk task as well to see how they are doing on a daily basis. And, and this is the risk burn down chart. So like you have the normal burn down charts, your sprint burn down charts for, for your story points, this is what you can also try. So you can, you can ha I have mentioned days here for a sprint, but you can have it for sprints as well, for a release burn down chart, risk burn down chart. So you have release one, release two, three, four, and five, and the exposure on the y-axis that you see, uh, that comes from that risk register table. So you can, uh, and that's, I have not taken picture of the actual task, but in the risk task, you can actually circle that thing, uh, like it's like exposure of 16, you can put 16 there on that, on that chip, or on that, uh, if you're using the manual board. On that chip, so that uh, that makes you understand how critical that risk is. What's the exposure? And similarly, you can monitor it like this. So, one one more point. So there will always, not always, but there will be cases. Most of the cases, you this will never meet uh, x-axis. You will always have some gap there because those are assumptions. Risk are assumptions that that we uh, that we started with at our release planning meeting, and with time, gradually, they might have got mitigated themselves. So, and they are no longer valid, for example. So, they, or there are certain risks that are not completely uh, mitigated, but they are reduced in nature. The, uh, the impact is reduced in nature. We can only reduce it, we cannot mitigate it completely. For that, we have something called this. Uh, residual risk that you see on the right, that you see on the table thing. There can be some risk which can be added later also, right? Yes. Maybe the risk was not found. Exactly, in the so, exactly. So, and, and that's, that's a mandatory thing to add. I mean, you cannot ignore risk just because you cannot take, uh, ideally you cannot, uh, should not accept work in a sprint once the sprint starts. That should not be a case with risk. You should be ready to uh, embrace risk anytime during a sprint. So if you, this is, this is the whole framework. Uh, so if you go from the risk, we, we discuss the risk and identification part, that we identify risk, uh, we analyze that, we create response, we apply response, we monitor it as well. So after monitoring uh, this risk modified Kanban board and risk burn down chart, they get updated uh, when we are monitoring it. And if there's any risk uh, that's not mitigated completely, but it's only reduced in 
in, uh, in impact, that's called the residual risk. So if that residual risk is approved in the sprint review meeting, when uh, you will see you know, the work that's been done by the team uh, in a sprint, he goes through that and he, and he accepts that, then if, if there's a residual risk which he accepts or approves, then it results to sign off and then the risk register is updated. That okay, fine, it's reduced with, with a comment. That's reduced in impact, accepted by, uh, by product owner, marketing is done. If it's not a, uh, approved, then it goes back uh, to that, we create a new response for it, it goes back to risk register and, and it's updated again. So that's, that's a simple uh, framework that actually I use in, in my project. So the couple of interesting things that I did, especially, uh, especially with the Kanban board, risk modified Kanban board, risk one down chart, and using product backlog to manage risk. Again, something that worked for me. I, I know there are questions, there are confusions around that, but this is something that worked for me. Probably may or may not work with the nature of project you are into. The team dynamics may, may matter, or your, your product owner, your scrum master may not agree. But I think it's a worth giving a thought to it. And um, if, you, if you still feel uh, you, know, you have any suggestions for me, how can we improve this, please go ahead and, and help me with that. I'm still learning. I'm not saying it's perfect, but there's something that, that worked for me. Any questions? No, we, we didn't get a chance to see this, like the risk management activities in various agile meetings. So th this was, uh, uh, the th these are the meetings where we should uh, identify risk and where we could identify risk. So like a small snapshot of what we just discussed. Thank you.